Welcome everyone um, to this session. My name is Samuel Kamochu and I want to take you guys through JIT part two or Git, depending on how you look at it. And today my focus is to look at how it is applied in enterprise software development. So of course, if you need to reach us out today, I did some contacts, you can go and follow us on the various channels and uh, we can keep the conversation going. So the objective for today are simple. One is that we want to see how we apply this Git in enterprise software development. And uh, we will tackle some few things on uh, Git branching policy. We'll talk about features, releases, bug fixes, and hot fixes, and how we deal with those things in the context of, uh, of, 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 of Git and how we deal with these also in the context of collabor collaboration. So we'll do a hands-on training. I will confess that yesterday we attempted to ensure that we make the exercise more collaborative, but because of time, we will uh, go through what I have, but I will highlight where each and every person would have taken uh, the various responsibilities. So maybe one of the things that I could mention, when I say enterprise software development, maybe one of the key things I have to ensure that I mention is that when you're working on a project on your own, then uh, you could be working to deliver for enterprise uh, for an enterprise. But the, what I mean by enterprise software development is when you're working on a product in collaboration with other people to meet the need of an enterprise, e.g. a telco, a bank, or any organization that you know that requires a solution. And they are very strict on the process and they are very key on various elements that some of us do not consider. So you'll be able to see what we do when we are serving those big enterprises, e.g. the banks here in Kenya, the telcos here in Kenya, when you're doing a software project for them, then there are certain things that you'll apply when it comes to JIT commands and uh, in the context of collaboration. So I think Peter did a very good job last uh, week to take us through the various things that you learned in part one. So we talked about the status, which you can run to just know which branch you're in and whether there are any files that are, have been modified. You can add to stage them. You can commit so that you can push them to your local repository. I think we learned about JIT as a VCS. It's a distributed VCS, meaning that you actually have a JIT repository on your local machine, fully fledged, but you can also push to another remote uh, repository like the one hosted on JIT, uh, GitHub. Uh, and these commands come in very handy. So add is to add to the local, commit is to commit to the local, Fetch is when you want to fetch from the remote. So let's say, for example, you created a branch from a GitHub and you want to fetch, or even another person had, was working on a certain branch. They have a challenge and you need to help them fix the issue within their branch. So you can do fetch so that you get a list of all the branches on your local machine. Push is now pushing. Once you commit to your local repository, you can push the 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 commits to go now to the remote uh, repository. So like on GitHub, you can push and you can also pull the reverse of push. If someone was working on a change and they were working on, your, on a certain branch that you are working on and you went on leave and someone continued with your work, when you come now the day after, you can pull from that branch that you're working on. So we also have checkout, which you use now to change from one branch to the other. Or sometimes you can use the checkout command to create a branch. JIT, com JIT branch and JIT merge. Merge is used now to when you're making changes on one branch and you want to move those changes now to another branch. So you'll be able to see these commands in practice, but in the context of collaboration. So if you have any query, you can post on the group so that even as I move forward, I can explain the command that doesn't make sense to you. So this is the moment where I take a small break and I request you guys to post on the chat what or which command or commands uh, do not make a lot of sense to you. And as we do the demo, I can illustrate 
uh, I can give a bit of focus on that. Any question, Marlin, from the group? Anyone who has a, a part where they need clarification on? I hope you guys can hear me. How to fetch the branch? Okay, Molly, don't worry, we'll get to answer that. Uh, princess, is there a way one can do all the commands at the same time, like did fetch and add push commit? Yes, Jackson will be able to see that. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between fetch and pull? Kinodia will be able to see that. Difference between fetch and pull, Henry has the same question. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yep, I, I think those are good questions and we can proceed with that. I was expecting someone to say merge, but I can't see you guys have no issues with margin. And the reason why I was hoping that merge would come up is because I know you guys operate on one branch if you have never collaborated with someone. <laughs> so you don't know why you need two branches, which is something that will answer. Yeah, you'll be demonstrating JIT remote add. Okay. So Evans, Asante for those questions, but we'll try and see what we can do. Of course, uh, the commands that I'll focus on are the ones that we have here, Bonambidi. But if you have any, if we have time, we'll be able now to move and see more. But all these things you're asking, they're actually somewhere on a document, and we need to ensure that you are able to read and uh uh, right. So let me move on to something else. And I know the guys who work in enterprises understand this, like our brother Bidi. So when you're doing products, and this is very contextual, this presentation is very contextual. Some places you might find that they do things differently. But most of the time in Meliora, what we do is we serve customers. We create software products for, for enterprises. So there is something called releases. So we don't just make changes on the main branch and we push to them. No, no, no. There is a cycle for doing the release in a product. When I talk about a release, you might have seen anything, either a library, a repository, or a software has a version. So the version number is part of the release process. So one of the key things I want to highlight here is when you say you're using Microsoft, uh, maybe Windows 10, and there was XP or Windows 95 for some of us who started early, all these are different versions. And you could find sometimes you're moving from version 1.2 to version 5, and you're asking yourself what's happening. So when you talk about versions, we are talking about the release process within the enterprise or within your products uh, development cycle. So we have release planning. So in most organizations, you'll find that we have product managers and project managers. So product managers define what will be the next feature within WhatsApp. And if there are any issues, they can also say, these are the things we need to fix in the next cycle. So they come up with release plans. So when you're creating maybe a system, you'll say initially we will have feature one, two, and three for the most minimum, the minimum viable product or MVP. And then later we are able to now add more features as we continue. And as we move forward, then we can talk about where is the world going. And we have something we call a roadmap. So you might fear, you might ask someone, do you have this feature within the the, within your software product and they tell you no we don't have it but it is in our roadmap and it's coming in q1 2023 or quarter one 2023 that's a language that you'll hear within enterprises when you're discussing software so even for you guys you need to have that picture in mind that we don't just wake up and develop what we wish to develop but we follow the product manager who defines what needs to come hoping that they work together with the market and the users to understand what is actually needed. But so the release planning is used to come up with a list of features that should be included in a release. And a release plan could actually be many releases that have to be done within the year. Of course, with Agile, these conversations are changing because the Agile manifesto assumes that we are not so sure about tomorrow and we can't think so much of to Q3 2020. 23. So we allow ourselves to be agile a bit, but nevertheless, we still have to do releases. So think of release planning as the stage in which we develop a list of things that need to be added. 
And I'll show you an example of a release plan shortly. Now, after that, once the release has been planned and the product managers are happy, they pass over the project to the project manager and we get a few guys to work together. Whether you want to call it a sprint, but essentially we are working towards a certain deliverable, which is that release that we want to release. And what these guys do is now they come up with a list of tasks to be executed for, this, for these features within that release to be done. And one of the things that I would mention, although we have talked about features in the release planning, sometimes we have a known issue that the users have gotten used to it and it's not a major one. It's not a critical issue. So it's a bug or it's an issue with the system and you want the next release to address that issue. So even a release plan could have bugs that we are fixing or new features that we are adding. So that's something that you should never forget. And the developers now come translate those things into tasks that can be executed. For us uh, in Meliora, we use Jira for development and Bitbucket as our tool equivalent to GitHub. So Jira, we use it for issue tracking. So we raise all those issues or tasks on Jira and we bundle them together and say, this is what you're going to work on. Once we finish, we'll have done a release. So sometimes you can have one feature that has to be broken into simpler tasks. Or if you're using Agile, guys, you'll hear user stories. But just think of something that you want to achieve within that, uh, within that uh, uh, release. So you can break that, whether it's a feature or user story or whatever, into sub-tasks that can be executed by different engineers. Because software engineering is about collaboration. And it's about fixing what that what the user requires. And the product managers are the ones who are close to the market to tell us what needs to happen. Now, a release is what comes out after the development. So after guys have, have the, the tasks have been listed, so we get Steve, we get Henry, we get Molly to come and pick a few things here and there. We get Tabby to come and pick a few things here and there. And once we get all those things executed, they'll be working on those features. And once everything has been closed within that release, then we say we have closed our release. And this is where now Bidhi and Tim will come in at some point. And I hope Bidhi, you can comment uh, uh, towards maybe the end. But this is where they come in to ensure that the release that is being brought into the system or that we want to take now to the market does not break, that, break stuff. So that's where now we talk about the quality assurance team that the area is bigger, but part of what they do is to ensure that what we release is of quality. There are no new bugs. We have tested everything. We have done regression testing to confirm that what was working before has not been broken. They do alpha testing. They do beta testing. They do all these things. They do unit testing. They do they ensure that unit tests have been done, integration tests, all those things. The keyword is they just ensure that they test everything to ensure that the quality can be guaranteed. And once they are happy, and sometimes we run user acceptance tests or UATs, and once they're happy, we move on to the second state now where we deploy or go live. As I mentioned these things, remember as part of the engineering uh, bootcamp uh, scope is we want to cover the end-to-end -end bit. So what I'm mentioning here might be covered in details in upcoming uh, sessions where we'll talk about, you know, deploying operations, DevOps, you know, all those things. And I know tomorrow you'll be introduced now to how not copy source code and just push the data to a server manually. Uh, and the key idea here is that after the release has been authorized and it's okay, it can actually now be deployed and we can go live. So we release the product to the real world, or these are the real users. And the real world doesn't mean you release it to everyone. You release it to everyone. You release it to the users of that system. And that's our world in that particular case. Because of the complexity of people working on different things, I think Peter mentioned we have uh, branches. They come to the rescue. And one of the things that we cannot ignore is that in enterprise software development, where we collaborate, we can never be working on the main branch or the master branch, depending on the tool that you're using. 
whether you're using GitHub, the default branch is called the main branch. If you're using Bitbucket, the default branch is called master. And whichever tool that you're using, there is the main branch. So for us to collaborate, we use a JIT branching policy or a model that works. And I do not want to take credit for what I've not created. I stumbled upon an article in 2014. The article was written in 20, 20, uh, 2010. That was four years later. The article is still valid today. And what I want to tell you is to just describe what happens for us to collaborate. Please note that I'm coming from the context where we, we have already created the tasks and these tasks can be picked by the developers one task at a time. You finish, you pass it over. You finish, you pass it over. So one of the key things that we need to remember is that for us to do that, we have certain rules that we have to follow. This policy does not work for every organization. And I think even the author made a reflection in 2020, and I will give you the link to this article so that you can have a look at it. But the key thing that we can borrow is some of the rules around the branching policy. So at the beginning of our work, we all know the branch we call the main or the master. Main or master, you should not, according to this policy, you should not commit to the main branch. So I should not see you making a change, then you say it add and then commit and you're in the main branch. Now you should not do that. Now two, the other thing that, that you should know is that we have the develop branch. Again, another branch that we use is the develop branch, which you should also not commit to it. So don't make changes to these branches. And this is a model. It doesn't mean that this is the only model that can work. Now, the other thing that you need to know is that we have feature branches. Now, feature branches are temporal branches which you create when you are executing that feature. So when you are executing that feature, you create a feature branch for that uh, task. Now, once you finish, that task will be eventually merged into the develop. So develop is the branch which is changing. It's very unstable but master is assumed to be stable according to this branching policy. Of course, a lot has changed, but for us who serve the enterprises in our context, this model still works for us. But for some organizations, if you are working in a startup where you do not have, you know, you can make a change to the button in a day and you release. The whole thing we talk about continuous delivery and continuous CICD, true CICD. Sometimes true CICD is not very practical when you're dealing with a customer like Safaricom has given you the job to develop a software. You might not have the true CICD because you still work on release cycles most of the time or from my own experience. So you create a branch for each feature. So if you are going to add a button called uh, logout, then you add a feature for logout feature. Then you go and add another feature you have a branch for it, another feature, a branch for it, and you develop. And as you develop, you can commit continuously, as, P as Peter said. You don't wait until you finish everything. So you can make a small change, commit, go for lunch. Come in the afternoon, make another change, commit, go for lunch. After three days, you have implemented the feature, maybe seven commits, as this guy is showing. And once that is done, we are supposed to merge back the changes to develop. And of course, a guy picks another feature, and creates a new branch from develop and we do some work then we come and do some work and then you come and do some work and after that we come and merge so you can see how the cycle of features work so features are created from develop because that's where we are developing from but you don't commit directly to develop what you do is you commit to your feature and once you're done we merge it and that's where the word margin comes into play or sometimes people say we want to pull the changes from the feature branch to the develop branch and you create a pull request so you are talking to the guy who is managing that project because you don't allow everyone to merge anything so you need a review process to ensure that what has been done by an engineer is actually according to what was specified so we do the merge and we come and put it here. Now, after that, 
once we have made all the features, please take note of here. Once we have already created all the features that we need, maybe feature one, two, three, and four, we can come and create a, a release branch. And once we create a release branch, it is taken through the QA and they check whether everything is working. If there are issues, what do you do? You fix them on the release, but once you fix them on the release, you also push them to the develop to ensure that in future, people who are developing, they don't experience the same issue. But once you are happy with the release and the QA team has given a go ahead, now you can merge the changes to the master, which now after merging, you're supposed to now tag that and say that this is release 1.0. And at this particular point, you can say how we did release uh, 1.0. So one of the things that you'll notice that release numbers vary. But sometimes if you have a bug fix, you have to increment a number within the release. So I will describe that briefly, but take a note that we need to know feature branches, develop branches, and you have the master branches, and you also have hot fixes. I talked about bug fixes and hot fixes. Maybe I would take this chance just to describe the difference between the two. A bug fix is a is when, when you have released a system and then you realize, ah, yeah, yeah, there is a problem and we need to fix it. If that bug is not critical, you can put it as part of the release plan and it can be delivered in the next release. E.g. when you're logging out, there is a, some behavior, an animation that is not okay for these guys who are, maybe on the UI, there is an animation that you need get rid of or there is a css that is overlapping with something else you can say okay forget about it we live with it but in the next release cycle we are going to make that change at that particular point that bug fix will come part as part of the release plan now hot fixes are issues you discover then you realize we cannot wait for the next release so you have to create a hot fix branch and once it is tested and everything is okay, you merge it to the master branch. But if you merge it to the master branch, it means that now that master has a fix and you increment the minor version, which is two. And then because you do not want the future releases to come with that issue, you also merge it to the developer. So developers are working on this issue or they're working on features, but then, some people have found an issue in production and they fix it. So when you fix it, you have to update the master because that's where production services run from. And you also have to update the de develop. Otherwise, the future release will come with the same bug. That's why you can see the same thing has been pushed this way and it has also been pushed to develop. When you are seeing a narrow pointing to another branch, we are basically saying merge into the develop, merge into master so i hope that helps someone uh where can one test security i'm going to illustrate this and uh jonas i'll be able to answer your question uh regarding that so i don't know whether there is anyone with a question on a branching policy and this could be new for some of you who are students who have been pushing stuff on github on one branch we don't do that in enterprises because we collaborate. So everyone who is working on a change, they have to be working on that feature or a bug fix branch. Anyone who is working on a hot fix, they'll be working on that feature. And once they finish, that feature is merged into their respective branch according to the policy. This document has a lot of details and I will not take a lot of time uh, showing you guys that. So if you have any questions, please, uh post them on the group and now the next thing is i'll just make a release for our vat calculator web web app and add three features and we are going to showcase how we will come and create the release so and then eventually i'll do a bug fix and we'll do it as a hot fix and then after that we can have release three which we will not work on now because of time but one of the things that you know is that, that release three, the process will be the same as release two, only that you're going to keep tagging the system. So you release and tag the main branch accordingly uh, when everything is, is done. Can I proceed to now the live?
Demo? Yes. Okay. I'll create it on the Natujenge. Uh, so we will call it uh, Natujenge. Maybe we can call it OYF, Overcome Your Fear Web App. So we will BAT, BAT Web App. Maybe I can, yeah, I can just call it that way. And we'll come, we we'll come say Natujenge, Overcome Your Fear. Yes, VAT calculator. Please note in my previous session, I had not done all these things and I'll make it public so that all of you can, can look at it. So I'm going to initialize it and it will be empty. So that's how you create a new app. Of course, one person will do it in the team. And what I need to do here is I need to come and change on the terminal. Um, sorry, I'll close some of these things that I and opened. So I'll come here and within the terminal, allow me to close this. So let me just open a new tab and I can come back and say repos, Jenga. I can come here and clone. So this is how you clone. I know clone, most of you know how to clone a project. Huh? So it's an empty repo, but it is still there. So I can say overcome your fear, web up. Now, since we are there, I can come here and copy this stuff. Everything that we had done previously. Yes, I think that's that's it. And I'll copy this and I'll come and uh, come to Natujenge and I come here and paste. Ideally, I'll paste all the six items. Now, once I paste all the six items, I'll go to this guy here. Uh, which is our editor. And I hope you guys can follow me through. And I'll go to documents, I'll go to repos, and I'll go to Natujenge, and then I'll, I'll come and open this. So we have our project there. Now, if you want to be sure, everything is there. So uh, there are two ways. I can access the terminal from the VS code, or I can access the terminal from here. So for the sake of being able to be on the same page, I'll come here and I will open the terminal here. Uh, and I will make this guy increase the font a bit for the sake of some of you. And I'll increase the font here. Sorry, that one. Now, I use git status. It will tell me which branch I'm in. I'm on the main branch and no commits yet. All files are untracked. So if I want to track, I come here and say git add. Then when, when Peter said the jitad command, you can add a file or you can add a folder. One of the powerful ways to add a folder is to say the current folder. I know you guys know two dots mean the back folder, the parent folder, dot means the current folder. Or sometimes you can say add star, meaning that you want to add all the files. But since we are in this folder, I'll say just add. I hope someone now has knows what uh, add does. Status, again, I query. And what the status command tells us, allow me to just do status again, I clear. Then I come here and do status. And we are able to see now these files have been staged. So if you want to unstage, you use uh, JIT or git remove. And then you can do all that. But for now, I do not want, I want to commit. Now, if I want to commit, I commit and give a message and I say initialized the repo is there, the, 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 the default VAT calculator. So this is a web app. Then of course it will tell you all the things created, the modes, uh, you know, these are permission modes and all that, how many files were changed. And then someone was asking now, when I do this, if I do the status, it will tell me that, this branch is up to stage, but your branch is based on this. Uh, you can use this to fix it up, but the upstream is gone. I have no idea what you're talking about here, but what you're saying is you have nothing to commit. Don't worry about this warning. And uh, working tree is clean. So you don't have any changes that are yet to be committed. But if I go to the central repository, it's still empty. 
because you can see nothing has changed. It's still empty. Now, what do I do? I have to git push, and some of you already know, since my branch is called main, I can do origin, which is the remote repository. So if you have three remote repositories, you can give them names. By default, we get origin as the default name. Then you can say you want to push to main. Now, if you have already set the main, if you cloned like us the way we have cloned, what I can do is I can just say git push and let's see what happens. Now, if you say git push, it assumes that you don't have to specify the remote, it defaults to origin, and you don't have to specify the branch because it defaults to the branch that you're working on. And that's why you can see that it has created a new branch, main and main here. So when you go to these, you'll be able to come and refresh and you'll find that we now have a main branch. Yes, and our code is there. But because this is our first version, maybe what we could do is we could call this a version. So I can come and create a, a release. So I can come here and create a release. And when you're doing a release, you will give it a, a release. Then you say slash 1.00. Maybe we are doing three, three numbers for releases. And here we can say release one. Here you're supposed to come and say, all features bug features then you'd come here and then you can say if there are any bug fixes that you have added then you can put them there of course if you have these what you could do is you could also come here and generate the notes if you have many commits so sometimes you don't have to generate the release notes and you can do this so here we'll come and say the features and the bug fixes because you have said that when you're doing a release, you can do that. I can publish the release. What are we getting? Ah, sorry, I have to create a new tag. So when I'm doing a tag, I could say release 1.0.0. That's our release. And it is based on the main branch. Or even before I do that, sorry, let me create the other the other branch that we need to have. So I can come here and create the develop branch. Of course, I come and create. Yes, and the develop branch comes from main. And I can also go to settings and make our develop to be the main branch that we are. Okay, maybe I can leave it like that. Don't worry about it. So up to that point, we have now our develop our according to this policy we have the master and the develop branch and those are the two main branches that you need to know so you can come here these are the two main branches the rest they can disappear so it's master develop but on our side we are calling it main develop so we have done that now the other thing that we'll have is we will come now and implement our features so we have feature one feature two feature three so i'm going to use github and use the features that that are already existing here. So we have about us, we have a link to our portal and a reset button. Those are the three things we're going to add so that we have the second version of the website. So I can come here and I come and come here on issues. I'll come here, not necessarily bugs, but the issue could be an issue. And here we are saying about us page. So here we add about us. Page. So that's a new issue. If you are using like as you use Jira, Jira does it differently. Then we have now the third, the second feature, add a link to uh, a link, link to the YF page. So here I can come here and say the description here, add a link. So please note, whatever we are writing here is dummy, but ideally the product managers would give you very clear requirements who the engineers will break them into nice tasks to be done. Here we are calling them issues on the footer. We can add that. And then the last one is we're going to add a, uh, the last issue now. We will add a reset button there. Calculation form. So here we'll add a set button to VAT calc form. 
Now, one of the key things that it's a best practice, you could call them issue one, issue two, issue three, but it's always good for you to, to ensure that you give them in a, you name them in a manner that the developers understand. And if they don't understand from the title, they can actually come and see what may be about us. The product manager will have given the content of the about us page and the screenshot of how it should be organized. Then the UI UX guys come in with the implementation. So up to that point, we have created the issues that need to be done on that release. Now, what do we do from there? The next step now is to come and create branches from them. Now we have to come and develop. As I said earlier here, we have done a release plan. We have identified the tasks and now we have to come and develop. Now here, we come here as developers and what do you do? Uh, I come here to an issue. So in this case, if we are three of us, I would give Steve I would give Henry, I would give Molly, I would give other guys other tasks. So here, let's assume that I am uh, Steve here. And what I will do is I'll come here as a development and I say I want to create a branch. When you create this branch, technically what you're creating is the feature branch. Maybe we could agree as a convention that all branches that start with feature, they will start with the word feature. If you're using uh, so you can check out locally. And when you say check out locally, if you're using GitHub for desktop, you can do that. But for me, I'm using this. And then I can come and do this. Now, this here, when what you're seeing on GitHub gives us two things. Someone was asking, what does Git fetch do? And what it does is this. Because now we have created a feature. Please, it's being worked on by Kamocho. So I'll copy this, but before I do so, I'll come here and I will open my code and I will come here and say Git status. Of course, it tells me that nothing to commit and everything is okay. But now what I need to do is I need to come and do Git fetch. If you do Git fetch, if you don't specify the origin, it will assume origin. So some of these commands, so I can say Git fetch from remote, so which remote am I calling it? The remote that has the name origin because JIT is a distributed. So you could have three remotes and you're local and you might want to fetch from a certain remote. So, but for us, we only have one remote which is on GitHub and our locals. So that remote by default is called origin. So if you say JIT fetch, you can pick it. But in the space where you have two origins, you can actually specify the origin. So doing JIT fetch origin and doing the JIT fetch without the origin part is the same here. So I can come here and do the fetch. Now, please take note of what happens. So that guys were asking, what's the difference between JIT fetch and JIT pull? JIT fetch gives us a register of all the branches that are on the remote. And in, in that case, our remote was origin. But now if I run it the second time, it will not see anything because in the first one, I'm already in sync. So JIT fetch does sort of a sync to those branches. And if you are not so sure about it, that's the behavior that I've seen, but you can go and look at JIT fetch and see what that happens. Actually, this is a very common question that people have been asking. JIT fetch tells the local repository that there are changes available on the remote repository without bringing the changes. So for you to bring the changes, what do you use? Pull. Now, if someone had already added uh, an about us page here, I still don't have that page on the local. So what do I do? I can come and say JIT checkout. And since I already have a feature called this, so I can come and JIT checkout because I want to work on this. And what happens is if you do JIT status, you'll be able to see what happens. You are on this branch, which has a link to the remote branch called this on the origin, on the remote called origin. So in other words, you're saying that my branch called fit or fit slash one about us page is a, has a link or sort of a, not really a mirror uh, because nothing happens until you push and pull. But if I push changes from this branch here, they will definitely go to here. So this, has allow, this allows us to say just JIT push 
without specifying the remote and without specifying the branch in the remote. So I hope that makes sense to someone. So here I can come and say git status and that's it. But because we are guys who want to create the about us page and that was the responsibility that we had, my work is to come and just copy this. And because we are not uh, doing a lot of development here, here our focus is on uh, doing these things on the repository. So I can come here and say about us.html. So what I do here is I paste and I come and give here about us. Now, please note that if you're building a backend system, it could be, the feature could be adding something else. And here you can have about us. And here is, is a sample paragraph. Once I make the changes, I can come here and say, before lunch, I say it's status. But before I go for lunch, I want to ensure that I commit. So I add my changes and I can say, add everything in my folder, which in this case is only one file. And then I can commit. And then once I commit, I can actually give the message for the commit and I say added about page, the shell for it. Maybe there is a lot of work that I need to do. Now, by doing so, on my local repository, this commit is here, but on the remote, it's not there. And this is where the command git push comes in. But I can do JIT push. As I said, I can push and specify everything here. Or one of the alternatives is just to say JIT push. And since I had cloned that report, that branch from the remote, it came with the settings already in place. So if I do so, you'll take note that it has actually gone from my branch to the remote branch that has the same name. And of course, we are talking about the origin, which we know is this one. So when I say an origin, it means that repository that we are working on on the remote, which is on GitHub, which in itself. Okay. So up to that point, we've been able to work on one feature and we have finished. Now, another guy at the same time comes and wants to work on the second feature. So we are still in the development phase. We have not merged. Everyone is working on their part and everything is okay. Uh, and now the next guy comes and says, I want to work on the second feature. So this is Henry uh, who wants to work on the, the adding a link to our page on the index page. So the business team gave a very clear requirement and we are happy. And since we have agreed, we always use feature to, to have a prefix or branches that are feature branches. And then I can do that and I create the branch. Then I come and copy this. Remember here, it's me doing it, but the assumption is that there is another collaborator who is Henry, who is working on that feature. So that at the end of the day, the three features have been developed by the three guys. And our work now is to come and do the reviews and merge everything into the develop. And if everything is done for that release, we now create the release branch. So what happens here is I'll come and copy this. And as I said, in your organization, you might find a few differences. So here I am doing fetch. And uh, because I don't want to do that, we can come and do git fetch so that you see what happens. If I do git fetch, of course, it gives us the new branch because on the origin, we are doing the sync and we are now trying to see whether there are new changes. And yes, there is a new branch that has been added. But the key idea is we have to check out to this branch here which is local, has that has the same name as the remote branch, which is out there. So I come and do the checkout. Once I do that, if I do status, I'll be able to know that uh, my branch has nothing and my branch is in sync or is up to date with the remote branch. Now, the reason why we use those remote branches is because my laptop could crash. So when you're going for lunch, ensure that you commit. And I will do this very fast. So the key idea here is because time is not on our side. The key idea here is we've been told to come and add a link at the footer. And we will come here and I will come to our website. Uh, and I will look for the page for this um, bootcamp. So I'll come here and I say I have a href for those people who do that. And since I want it to open on the same tab, I can come and say 
uh, what which tag do you use to ensure that it opens on a new its target yeah? and you can say blank page and then you can say it opens on a blank page and then here you can say uh, here you can come and say uh, visit our not to jenga so i do that and of course if you are a guy who is keen on doing these things then you can see the link is there and it opens on a new tab so, so whoever was working on that feature has completed now i'll show you a new command uh, which a new way because someone was asking can i do this without doing that so i'll show you another interesting command instead of if i say git status so it shows me that but what if i want to add so i can say i want to add i can say git add star and then i can say and do that so that way you can do multiple commands you can chain them but here i want to show you something else and i can say minus a this switch ensures that anything that has not been staged it will be staged first but it only actually sorry not staged it commits we ensure that all these files that had not been uh, staged yes changes not staged for commit so whatever had not been staged for commit you stage it automatically only that if there is a new file that was not being tracked it will not be added by this command so you can do that instead of saying git add then you add the file then git commit minus m here and we can say we have added this capability here so i can come to our release notes and our issues on git and we can come here and say i have basically added the link to the html page so what the issue was i can come and say the commit that's it so i can come here and commit and i quote the message and i can say done now once i do that again i need to push it because until i push it everything will work so you can see it has pushed to the origin which is our origin here and this is what has gone now let's do the third feature so that we finish our release and then we move on to the next thing so i have that feature and uh, this guy now is add a reset button and i come here and i create a branch for development because we agree that our features must start with that so that a hot fix can start with hot bug can start with bug so you can do that and this is a convention that you have to agree uh, so here we can come and do this so one of the key things that you could do and i will come here and paste this here uh, let me just come here and paste this here and one of the key things that you can do is you can actually come and do git fetch i can avoid origin and i can do that so there was someone who was asking can you run two commands without is there a way we can do all the commands at the same time and add commit and push so you can do that my brother jackson so all you need to do is you can do that and and, and eventually you can come and uh do this uh, push so you can do that so what happens is uh eh, no this one you can't push after checking out what are you pushing you've not done the development but you can come and do this and then you check out so i can run this and what it does is that it pulls the remote so it pulls the remote you can see feature 3 has come and we have also changed the branch now to this switching the branch so you can actually do that by using and and that allows you to do that now the key point that i want you not to forget is that we don't develop on develop we don't develop on main we develop either on the feature branch hotfix or the bug fix we don't even develop on the release <laughs> we don't develop on the the master we don't develop on the develop so the develop is where we all merge what everyone is developing into that space so by the time you are getting to week five and you're working on a project we will go through the whole process and our hope is that you'll apply these lessons in that implementation so by now we have that and all i need to do is i want to come here and i'm not the guru of html and all those things i just want to go to the form and i want to see forms and then i can see input types and i want to see the reset i think there is an input time called reset
yeah there is an input type called reset and it resets the form so i'll come here and add it and i'll give it a name called reset so you can come so that's all i need to do because that's what the business team had said and they said that besides the calculate button which we looked at previously i need to come here and add an input button of type reset and maybe i could also give it a name because i love html5 uh, x html i can do that which is optional and here i can come and give it a name and i say reset or clear reset the form is it name no actually the name is reset the value is the one that i need to give it reset that. now if i do that because you don't commit without checking whether what you're developing works i can come here and if i put here a thousand and i do 16 i calculate because it does shh, the api it won't work but then i can do reset you can see the reset has taken back the values of course here you can see that there is a bug don't worry it's because of something called cross origin uh, which is another thing that we'll talk xss attacks so ideally if the web page is hosted here it can't invoke another guy who is not on the same host unless you set some header parameters http header parameters i don't want to confuse you with those details but just know when i'm testing here it might not work because of certain limitations on one web app cannot make an api call to another server otherwise you can be attacked easily or cross site scripting attack you are having one website and the website sends data to another website which could be very risky uh, and of course the internet people have come up with a solution now what i want to do here is i want to come and now which other thing do i need to showcase as i finish this let me see whether there is a question that uh, fetch i hope molly you can see what fetch does i can see jackson you i hope you have been answered amos kinudi i hope you've been answered henry i hope you're okay confirm on the chat if you're okay uh then uh that's it evans busy you've not been answered and then jonas you've not been answered so allow me just to proceed and i hope that by the end of the session i'll answer your questions so here i'll come and say the quick way of doing it and i say added reset button now at least we are not doing more coding uh today i'm not demonstrating on conflict resolution because some of you will make a change and another person will make the same change and you have two files now the vcs tool doesn't know who to believe and you have a conflict and someone has to deal with it that one will deal with it as we develop together in teams so that point at technically what has happened is we have done the development of all the features and the version is ready for release the only difference is in reality you don't develop and do the review after everything sometimes in an organization you could find that one person finishes the first day they create the pull request people review the changes are merged the second guy works on another feature then it could be not in a serial way that i've done sometimes you finish on one thing you merge it you finish on one thing you merge it you finish on one thing the earlier you merge the better otherwise you might have a lot of conflicts and if that doesn't make sense maybe it will make sense the earlier you merge the better to minimize conflicts conflicts are messy for you to resolve so i'll go back to our github and uh if you guys use jira you need to look for the equivalent of jira ah sorry bitbucket you need to look at for the equivalent so what i need to do here is i will come and on each of the issues because now we are coming to the branches sorry you merge the branches now one of the things you'll notice that this branch is a head of feature one is there is a new so you are seeing compare and pull pulling is basically you want to pull those features essentially what is happening pull is represented by this arrow here so anytime you want to move from that feature and push the changes here then that's what we call the pull now what ideally would happen is this so you create a pull request pull request doesn't pull it's basically telling your teammates that there is work to be reviewed and once that work has been reviewed then you can merge and during the merge that's actually when the arrow is fulfilled so here i'll come and create a pull request 
and I will create a pull request for the three changes. And ideally, when you create the pull request, you're supposed to say uh, whatever that you added, added uh, about us. So when you're doing the pull request, you're telling the guy who is supposed to review what exactly did I add so that they can review. Pull requests are, can, uh, they are basically actions to help the team to review. And of course here, I can say we are merging into the developer. I know I had not changed that, but uh, for the sake of argument, let's assume we are merging to develop because we said all features must go to develop. And I come here and add. Now, and then I'll do the same for the other three branches because I want to do everything together. So I'll come here and I will from develop. There is something small that I didn't do, which is making us, so I need to change maybe our main development branch to be developed instead of the main master or main. And as Peter mentioned, GitHub decided to use main because they don't believe in master and slavery. So yeah, but you'll find in certain VCS tools, then we are using that. So here we are merging into, you can see the arrow, you're merging the add reset button into develop. And once that is done, of course, you have to give the details of what you're doing. Ideally, when guys come to review, maybe sometimes in our organization, what happens is we plan for a session or sometimes you find guys come in to review and they give the comments. So you could have a policy where if you are working in a team of five, at least two people need to approve a change before it is merged. So for you to approve, you actually come to the pull request, this one for adding the about us page. And then you can come and say, but for the sake of argument, I can come here and I say, I want to review. So I can come here and maybe, for example, I have this and I want to review. So I can come here and I can see the files that have been changed. We've added one file and this is what it is. I can come and review the changes and I can come and approve. Of course, I'm the creator, so I can't approve. So assume Henry approves and then Steve approves. And then once Henry and Steve approves, then we agree that Molly is the one who is supposed to merge all our branches. So Molly would be the one to come and merge. So, but they have to come and approve and say, looks okay. And then they come and say that. And, you know, then when I go to this pull request, I'll see, ah, Kamochu did this. Molly said, looks okay. This other person said, it looks okay. And then of course, the last person does the margin. When you're doing the margin, please note, you are taking the changes to develop your margin one commit into develop from feature. And that's what happens. And you can come and confirm the merge. And that's it. Once you merge a feature, you are supposed to delete that feature branch because it's not necessary anymore. Because everyone has looked at the feature and they're happy. If that feature has an issue, we will come and create a bug fix on the release. So please note, that once you merge the feature, the branch, the feature becomes irrelevant, the branch becomes irrelevant. And for the sake of time, I'll come here and do the same for all these others. And I'll come here and I will merge, assuming that uh, the policy uh, allows me to merge. Of course, here I'm working alone, so I'm merging everything on my own. Then I come and merge the last thing. And of course, I have done the review, went to the changes, discovered, okay, this looks okay. If you find an issue, you can leave a comment, of course. And once you leave a comment, I can come and say, Molly, you know, come in. Or maybe I can stay, tell Brian here, please change X, Y, Z. So that's how we collaborate. And then you do whatever that you have to do. But here, because of time, I'm not interested in that. So what I have to come here and do is I come and just say that our, our request is okay and I can merge and I can confirm the merge and once it's merged anything else that has to be done it will be done using another branch so once I do that as I said earlier if I come here I'll find that I have five branches but because I've merged these guys I can actually come and delete them one two and then this please note the develop is still having so up to that point what we've done is we've been able to see how the changes were merged into the develop. How do now do we create a release? Now, for some of us, depending on the tools that you use, I will use a different approach here. And what happens is I will come to the develop branch. Yeah. And I will come here and change to the develop branch. 
And since the develop branch has all those things, I can come and create a new branch. And I call it release slash 1.0.0. The reason why I'm creating this for some of you is to ensure that because all the features have been merged, let me create a new branch that will be taken to the QA team. Now, what that means that immediately I create the release branch, guys now can start working on release too because I have created a copy of the develop at the timestamp when the release, all the features were there in the, in the, in the develop branch. And so guys now can proceed and work on release too. So even if, even though Akina and Bidhi are working on QA and they're becoming difficult with the help of the risk department saying that, you know, the system has to have one, two, three, four, the other guys are working on the second release, which has another three features that will come in later. So that's how you collaborate. So the, the release branch becomes a snapshot when all the features we needed in those releases were done. So of course, these are norms and things, the conventions, but sometimes you'll have scenarios where you're dealing with exceptions within an organization, but please do not worry. So in the event the UAT guys have an issue with the code on that release, they can, they can come and create a new branch and they call it a bug fix. And then they can say, uh, add uh, change from Natujenga. Maybe let's say where, what we had here. So I can come here and let's say, for example, the business said that the Natujenga should be in caps because they are so strict. The Natujenga should be in caps. Then I can say Natujenga to be. Or maybe what I can do is I can come here and I can come and create a new issue and I can uh, specify, okay, let me just simplify issues. I'll come and create a new branch. Of course, when you're dealing with certain tools, I can come here and create a new branch. Remember, I'm using from release one and I can come and say bug uh, to Jenge uh, in the footer to be in cups. Yeah, ideally that's how you do. And of course, once I have that, I can come and uh, of course, JIT fetch and I change that, then I commit. And those changes now, when I merge them, I'm supposed to merge them on the release. Now, I'll show you that because I said that if you have an issue here, uh, and time is not on our side, if you have an issue here on the release branch, you make the change. And as you make the change, you have to, merge those changes to the develop branch because the future release must come with that change. So if the business says that this Natujenga here must be in cups, so what I need to come here is I need to come and say JIT fetch and it will show me all the branches including the new branch and of course don't make changes on the release so I'll come here and copy this and I check out JIT check out then I can come and copy these here uh, and then I paste, that's it. So I can come here. And of course the business said that this footer here, okay, so I have just done a change. Someone was asking, how do you now pull? I need to pull changes because after switching, it doesn't mean that all the files are here. Okay, am I on which branch? Did I create a... Okay, I think I created the that bug fix branch from the wrong branch. So just let me allow me to check this and I can see it. Uh, let me create a new uh, come here and I'm going to create a new branch. Mm -hmm. I can see six commits ahead of main. But why have we not matched this? So about as I can see it, the footer, I can see it. Okay, let me just, just check out its status, the pull origin slash this. Okay. For some reason, the changes that I made are not here. Um, yeah, did pull. 
Okay. Maybe what you're going to do is we'll check out, but for some reason, the changes that I have there. But let's assume that you're going to make a change here and make this guy in Atujenga in caps for the sake of argument. I think we'll have an issue because of the main thing that I didn't add. So I do status. Did I save this one? Yeah. Okay. So there is an issue there. Let me just hit pull. It push. It pull. This is when uh, Murphy's law says whatever can go wrong will go wrong. So let me just uh, see what is pending so that I can uh, see whether they, we have time to look at that. I think I've displayed on how to do the margin, creating the bug fixes. Don't worry. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I will come here and I will create that bug fix as an issue and I'll call it uh, maybe when I come here or oh, when you do this, by the way, you can close them. Yeah? Sorry, I forgot to tell you guys that when these issues are dealt with, you can actually close them uh, once they have been delivered. Whoever is margin can actually close them and then we can come and close the other issues. That's another thing that you need to know. So once they have been uh, delivered, you need to close them. Yeah, so essentially that's uh, in a snapshot. Uh, it gives you an idea of what you're supposed to do. I was hoping that I could do the fixing, but because of time, I think I'll leave it there. Maybe we can do a follow-up question, uh, a follow-up session with you guys in case we need uh, something. Yes, 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 yes. So that was uh, it. I don't know whether there is anyone with a question. I think we'll end there. Uh, we've seen. Uh, something and thank you guys for for the time but the key thing that you should not forget is that when you're developing you don't develop on the main branch create feature branches each developer who is collaborating could work on one feature concurrently once they're done we need to come back and merge them and once we merge them we merge them to the develop once we finish the features that are meant for a certain release we create another branch from the develop and one of the things that we'll do is finally we'll come and we will merge the release. And I think this arrow shows here. So let's assume that our release has no issue. The QA guys are happy. So what happens is I would come here on the portal. I would basically come and say that on the, uh, the system, I would come and compare and add a pull request. But where do I merge? I merge it on the main branch because the main branch now is our is our master then i can come and say added uh, release 1.0 changes to the master branch now once the master branch has been added you will be able to see everything that was added here and you can merge and once we merge we are now technically in this. Of course, you don't merge without the reviewers again. So guys will come and review and see what happened, how many changes were added, everything that was added, and they're happy that the release is perfect. And once we merge, we'll come now to the master and we'll create a new release. So we come and create a new release. And that release, of course, we use the main branch as our guy. And then we'll give it a tag and we say tag. Uh, uh, we give it release maybe 1.10. Uh, 1 so someone would ask, when do you change from so one point uh, from two one point something to two point? So normally, when you see three digits, the first one means the major version. Uh, this is minor version, which has addition features, and these are small incremental bug fixes that you see. If there are new features, you increment this number. If there are bug fixes, you increment this number. If you change the architecture of the system, you move from 1.2 to 2.0. Because now even the modules, the layers, the architecture could be very different. So that's what we do. And we'll come here and say release 1.10. And then you come and say generate the, the feature. So here it will talk about what was changed and who are the contributors. And it will have, you know, come out, you made the first contribution to this repo. If all these changes had been done by different guys, then it will mention reset button by Steve, this by this, this by this, 
and we can actually publish the release. And once we publish the release, if you go back to the repository, you'll see now that we have the latest release is 1.10. But if you want to see all the other releases, you'll be able to see uh, the releases that are there. Where, what are the other releases that are there? Yeah, and you can copy the source code and you can download the release. You can do build and you can deploy the website based on this. So in the event one day, someone messes up your server and it was running on release 1.2, 1.10, you come here and pick it and you go and deploy. So technically we have seen how uh, certain organizations, not all, don't be surprised if you go to work for a certain company, you find that they do something very differently. But essentially, even with GitHub Flow, there are some things that they have borrowed from this old model that was used in collaboration within the software engineering. Why are we studying this? Because by the end of the whole uh, bootcamp, you should be able to collaborate with friends because software engineering is about collaboration. And I'll end there, unless someone has a burning question, uh, there is one guy here who has asked a question that I've not answered. I'll answer it later. So where can one test the security? So Jonas, don't worry about testing the security. That will come in as part of the, 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 the pipelines when now we are doing the deployment. There are certain things that will happen. But even when you're doing the UATs, the, when you're doing the release testing, the security team, the information security team or whatever name that the organization gives them, they're also part of the team that does the acceptance. The users accept their things, but there are also other platform tests that are done either to check things that the users might not check out, like performance, can you handle a thousand requests in a second? That one the users may not test, but there is another tech team that checks that. Whether your APIs are secure, whether someone can simulate uh, a request and withdraw money from your system without having to go through the access channel, through the web app or the app. All those things now are part of the, the space between you coming up with a release and taking it to production. And that's why the flow has a provision for some changes here. After we do the release, then there's some changes that could happen. And as they change, we take them back to the develop so that the future releases, which will also be based from develop, will come with those features in place. Otherwise, if you don't do that one day, you'll be able to have a feature that was fixed during the release testing. And next time when you're doing version 1.2, you discover that the feature has come back and the users will be very unhappy with you. When you upgrade the system, you always break down what we had already fixed. So you can't have that if you do this leg of pushing the features back to the develop or the fixes within the release branch during the UAT process as the security team tells you change this, change this, change this. Then you have to ensure that you bring them back here so that the future changes will always be incorporated in the future release. Oh, the future releases will always incorporate the fixes that you did. So again, as I said uh, earlier, my timekeeping skills are under test, but I hope I have answered most of the questions if not all of course this is part of the software engineering process so writing classes and committing is not the end of it you need to understand the full picture i hope the image is taking shape and i hope that we'll walk this journey with you guys so that by the end of it you'll have heard everything we hear when you're doing software and development in an enterprise context thank you so much for uh, allowing yourself to be to be my audience. So I really appreciate and I hope the session has been beneficial to someone. And uh, yes, Marlene, over to you.